If you're like me, and you feel like you were cheated out of getting to experience an era when guitar players dressed like friendly pimps, you are an excellent candidate to learn some funk music. So today we are gonna look at kind of like an intro to playing funk music, and it's all just about one rhythm that you can kind of manipulate and four different chord voicings, right? So uh, it's, again, it's more about learning the techniques and actually uh, one single thing to play, but it's gonna sound something like this. So basically, all that is, is chord voicings you already know, and we're gonna talk about it just by using the bottom three strings, or the top three strings, however you wanna look at it, the G, B, and E string. For the purposes of this lesson, we are gonna pretend as if the E, A, and D strings do not exist, right? And that's kinda of how we get that real, kinda of high-pitched, I guess, these higher chord voicing tones. And basically what I'm using, I'm using a Strat, which is kind of a typical funk guitar. It's not that you can't play funk on any type of guitar, but I am actually using the pickup selector in position number four, right? So I'm getting kind of like a... To, to me, this is kind of the spankiest tone on this Strat. Now, a lot of Strats, actually, the middle pickup will be the best one to do it. Again, you can do it every, anywhere you want. Like in the bridge, I think... That's a little too harsh, but uh, if you bring it up, just for whatever reason, my, this strat I think sounds best in this position, but really just kind of experiment to see the best one that you can get, right? So uh, the first chord voicing that you probably learn on guitar in general is most likely an E minor chord, right? Now we're gonna take just the bottom, or the top, three strings of this E minor chord, and if you look at that, it's just open, G, B, and E. Right? Now, if we apply that to a bar chord, we can do that anywhere. And the root note being the open E string, right? If we did the same thing on like an A, so the fifth fret is an A, right? If we just barred these right here, this is a minor chord. So this is gonna be kind of like our first funk chord voicing that we can move around, okay? So here's just one. Now, the tip that I can give you that'll kind of get you sounding funkiest right off the bat is constant motion with your strumming hand, right? So what I mean by that is, again, I'm just barring the three strings on top here, and if you notice, my pointer finger is nudging up against the D string, right? So I can't hear it. So doing that allows my pick greater flexibility when I'm trying to concentrate on just hitting these strings, right? So, so if I'm muted, again, I'm just not holding down, I'm touching the strings but not squeezing them down, right? If I'm muted, it sounds like this. Just down, up, down, up, one and two and three and four and. Now I can selectively choose where the pressure goes to get the chord, right? So if I want it on the one, it would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. A good exercise is to cycle through all the beats and start adding different chords, different sustained chords, right? So if I, if I start on the one, one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three. So basically you get the idea. You're just kind of getting the feel for the rhythm, because funk guitar is all about rhythm, huh? by choosing when you're squeezing that chord down, right? So again, we're gonna learn four chord voicings all together and put them together, right? So the next one is, and you already know all these, so the next one is gonna be like a D chord, right? Another one of the first chords you learn. Now, if we just focus on the three strings right here and pretend the low strings don't even matter, this is a movable shape, right? So D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. So we're actually gonna go down to this G chord, which I'm thinking of my root as where my ring finger is. So it's really valuable to know how to find the root notes and where they exist on the strings. I'll link you to a video in case you want help on learning where notes are on the fretboard and stuff, right? So, so this right here, the eighth fret on the B string is a, is a G. So this is a G chord. And again, I'm selectively just aiming with my pick to get the top of this chord here, right? And my pointer finger is budging up against the D string. So I'm not getting like a. So it's really all about selectively hitting what you're trying to go for, right? Okay, so we got this G chord. And the next one we're gonna learn is gonna be an A minor voiced chord, right? So uh, is the, the open A minor. Now, if we just take the bottom three strings, we get this kind of two, one open, which is a staircase type thing. So if we do it, did it in the context of an E minor, we get this, right? See, so 
just like it's just like a staircase. Nine G, eight B, seven E. Now your root note would be where your ring finger is. In fact, this is just part of like an E minor bar chord voicing, but without the lower strings. Now the nice thing about this is we can go from this G to this E minor in a much easier way by adding your pinky here. G, E minor. G, E minor. Doesn't matter. Okay, so the next one we'll learn is gonna be an E major voicing, right? So again, at the top it's really easy. It's just one open open. So we can recreate that by this right here. So in an E major chord, the root note is an E, so it's just the open string. Whatever the high E string is, that is how this voicing is gonna be applied, right? So the eighth fret on the high E string is a C. So to get a C major chord, we just go eight E, eight B, and nine G. So you notice I'm doing all of these chords in kind of the same area. I've got a G major to a E minor to a C major, and then the nice thing about this is we can just slide this down to a D major, right? So this is all in the key G right now. So we've got a G major, E minor, C major to D major. Now the progression of this would be a one, a six, a four, a five. G is one, six, G, A, B, C, D, E is six. Yeah, uh, C, G, A, B, C is four and D is five, right? So we can think of this as just our progression, right? So we're gonna learn one more chord voicing. Actually, we already did this one. It's the minor one, right? The, where you just bar it. But we're gonna do it on the high E. This is gonna be the octave E minor. So we're gonna take ourselves from this chord voicing to this one, to here, slide into this one, and then end on the E minor, however you wanna do it, right? Now, another really fantastic thing about funk music is that you give things cool names, right? So uh, we're gonna rename some of these chords because it, it kind of sounds lame. It doesn't sound funky just to call this a G major. So we're gonna call this G major Superfly, right? And then this minor voicing is gonna be a uh, minor electro shizzle. And then this major voicing is gonna be C major Starship. And then the bar one is gonna be uh, E minor Huggy, Huggy Boots. So we've got G major Superfly to E minor Electro Shizzle, to C major Starship, to D major Starship, to E minor Huggy Boots, right? So that could be just a different way you look at all chord voicings in general. But the next thing we're gonna do is to slide into a chord. So that G major Starship thing, right? Did we call that Starship? Yeah. No, Superfly, Superfly, my bad. So the G major one, we're gonna slide into like this. Like you're arriving from one fret back is kind of like a cool thing you can do to get like a cool funky sound like. So instead of just going right to the G, you go to a. And you can use any of the chord voicings for the C. To the D. So just slide from one fret back, two frets back, as long as you're just kind of momentarily arriving from there, it's a cool thing. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work a scale into this, right? So we're gonna go to the E minor Huggy Boots one, right, where you just hold the 12th fret. Now, if we play the E minor scale, and again, pretending we don't have the lowest three strings on the guitar, it's gonna look like this. This is gonna be the minor scale. Like if I did the whole thing. We actually start on G. So really, this is the G major scale. We're doing it in E minor's position, whatever, and we're gonna start adding notes from this scale into the chord, right? So there's the barred chord. The G string is gonna be 12, 14. The B string is gonna be 12, 13, 15. And the high E string is gonna be 12, 14, 15, right? So we could just add any of those. We could play through the scale like this. Or we can just start randomly adding notes to this chord. All I do is I added my pinky to the high E string, which I'm making another chord. This is actually a G major voicing for this chord, but I'm thinking of inflecting an E minor chord voicing to make it more interesting. So E minor. Right? 
Now, all those are different chords in and of themselves, but we're thinking of them more as inflections that we're getting from a scale, right? So all together, let's work on just a little bit more of the rhythm, right? So we're gonna get on the G Superfly one here, right? And I wanna work on accenting or sustaining every third stroke. So this is gonna be our, our rhythm. So it has kind of a triplet feel because I'm getting every third note, right? Not technically triplets, but I'm thinking in threes. So the first downstroke, one and two. So I get a downstroke and two mutes. One and two and three and, right? So those are my first six beats. The first one and the, uh, the fourth one are squeezed, are non-muted, right? Or sustained, however you want to look at it. One and two and three and, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and. So if we do two of those, that's how we count it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So the last four beats are gonna be just all sustained. So all together, one and two and three. G major voicing because that's the the one the tonic so it kind of wraps up right there now I'm gonna link you to uh, a song that I did off of that Andreas and Sean album that kind of has a few of these principles involved because you, you don't have to use these techniques just in funk music these are just kind of general playing techniques with more of a funk sound because of the nature of the pickups because of the nature of how we're playing it and the nature of the chord voicings but again Overall, this is just a great way to learn more of the fretboard by moving some of these shapes that you're already very intimately familiar with, but doing it in the context of a funk playing atmosphere.